So that brings us to the question of the day, because throughout all the debt ceiling drama, equities have still moved higher. Do you chase the rally? Yes, S&P is light by two tenths of 1%. We're below 4,200, but nonetheless, it's been a very confusing run. David Costin, Chief U.S. Equity Strategist at Goldman Sachs, joins us now. David, do you chase here? I would say no. Our forecast for the S&P 500 is 4,000, which is modestly below the current level, roughly 4,200 right now. Uh, and so there's a couple of issues. You've obviously discussed the debt ceiling, which is pertinent and, uh, and sort of near term. But the other issues involve lack of money flow, sort of sponsorship in the market. Another issue would be negative earnings. Mm -hmm. We've seen negative year-over-year -year earnings growth in the fourth quarter, in the first quarter, and it's expectations that the current quarter we're in <clears throat> will also show year-over-year uh, -year decline in earnings. We've got some margin headwinds, and the economy is basically moving sideways. And ultimately, what matters is what the market is pricing. Mm -hmm. And the market right now is pricing as though the economy is going to grow at a roughly 1% or so economic growth rate. And we, and I come to that conclusion, Alex, is we look at the relative performance of cyclical stocks mm -hmm. compared with defensive stocks. And that's consistent with an economy that's growing sort of mostly. So the answer to your question, the way I think about it, the way our team thinks about it is modest downside to the equity market to around 4,000 and the level we would, uh, we would anticipate is fair value. So what I find so confusing though is that all of your arguments make sense, um, but yet we still continue to kind of melt up here. Is your interpretation positioning? Is it simply all about seeking protection in, in, big, in big tech? Is it a baby bubble in AI? I mean, it's easy to find the bear case, but what do you think's been driving the bull case? Well, think about it in the following way. The leading tech stocks are up, broadly speaking, around 14%. Make that statement because they are the largest positions in most hedge funds. <clears throat> Typical hedge funds up 3% uh, year to date. And the uh, Goldman Sachs hedge fund, very important position list, the VIP list that we track <clears throat> and we monitor on Bloomberg, is, uh, is up around 14%. So what explains the distinction between some of the leading positions are up a lot, but the typical fund is sort of modest, and the typical mutual fund is also lagging its benchmark. About a third or so are beating the benchmark, two-thirds are lagging their benchmark. What accounts for this? Yep. Well, healthcare, which is some of the best, you know, the biggest allocation that hedge funds have, that's lagged as a, as, a, as, a, as a group of stocks. And so I think index hedges have also been a headwind to performance. So we think about the performance of how fund managers, how our clients are, 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 are performing. There's been idiosyncratic developments as how funds or uh, positions are, are, put, are put together. It's been a headwind to the, to, to the market. That, to me, explains some of the reasons yeah. why their uh, performance is lagged. David, good morning. It's Guy. Um, if you've got morning, a convincing Guy. break above 4,200, would that change your view? Would a move up to, say, 4350 change your view? How are you thinking about where we are now and when you would have to rethink your thesis on what is going on here? So, a guy, would, one of the questions we would be really focusing on and currently are focusing on is what are the building blocks? What's driving that performance? Is it a view that the Fed is going to be cutting rates? It's not the Goldman Sachs view. The view is the Fed is basically likely to be on hold from now kind of till the you know, balance of this year. And, uh, and that would be a uh, reason that valuation-wise, <clears throat> we wouldn't see necessarily, wouldn't kind of advocate or sort of rationalize why the equity market would move higher. On the other hand, if it became clear, perhaps the economy is decelerating, to a greater, that's a concern on a revenue front, but God, that would be arguably a supporting argument for why you could have a multiple expansion. Mm -hmm. Multiple right now is the 85th yeah. percentile, so it's very expensive. So, so that would be the thought process that would we go would go through, kind of balancing those two variables off. David, why wouldn't playing the chips trade and the AI trade be safety in this environment? Well, the AR trade is likely to play out <clears throat> over over a, a longer term period period of time. There's a lot of euphoria around it, and some of the stocks that are likely to benefit from those are the larger cap tech stocks that have done great. Meta, 
Alphabet, Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon to a certain degree, and, and my colleagues Eric Sheridan, who's our internet analyst, Cash Rangan, covers the software companies at Goldman Sachs. You know, big advocates for these companies as beneficiaries for uh, of the of the AI <clears throat> generative AI, you know, kind of trend or movement or or the growth prospects, and that they will be benefiting on the revenue side. So, Alex, those were main stocks that would be uh, the most fund managers own these stocks. Uh, so necessary on the margin, you'll continue yep. to own those companies. They're likely to you know, likely to perform, but it's not necessarily that that lifts you to a uh, to a higher level. And the question, Alex, then is, well, over what period of time are the generative AI benefits that may uh, inure to corporations? Well, that's a that's an argument for why you could get margins re-establishing kind of they got as high as 12 percent. Margins moved down to 11 percent. You could argue there could be 400 basis points, arguably, of margin expansion. But that doesn't come at a at a cost. There's issues of dislocated employees. Do taxes go higher? Yep. Uh, yep. What exactly are the externalities there? David, let's go back to the debt ceiling. Um, Speaker McCarthy, there's a, a line on the wire. We could still finish this by June the 1st. Um, he thinks that it could be done by that X date, if that is the X date. There is then the issue of liquidity. The Fed. Um, the government, sorry, would have to issue a lot of short-term paper. That's going to suck a lot of liquidity out of the market. How are you thinking about how stocks are going to do in that kind of light liquidity environment? Well, the argument is, <clears throat> historically speaking, the equity market tends to be weak ahead of these negotiations. They always seem to go to the, the, the 11th hour to midnight hour, and then they eventually resolve the, uh, the situation. And so in that case, market's a little bit weaker, down a couple percent, closer to our 4,000 target. And then you get yep. a, a, a modest rally. And then uh, so that would be the way I would think about it, Guy. But what, uh, just, sorry, 10 seconds. If, if equities up, liquid, liquidity up, equities up is normally the way. Liquidity down, equities down. That wouldn't apply here, you don't think? Well, no, because, Guy, what we're seeing all the money flow is going into cash. Cash offers you a 5% return, zero volatility. The earnings yield in the market is a little, little above 5%. So you basically yep. have similar trade-offs, and all the money, Guy, is still going into uh, money market mutual funds. You get, a, you get a pretty high return, very high return, on three-month T-bills. Yep. So in this environment, it's not as though the uh, liquidity up, because liquidity and the funds are going into cash.